Oh, bad move, Pink Pony. No chance you're making it out alive. Aw, oh, Sweetums06, are you gonna cry? Ah, shoot! Napkins, napkins. Oh, it's, it's, it's brilliant! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show that's bringing home the baking. Wait, who are you? This is my show. It's it's me, head editor Dan. You hired me. And have you hurt yourself lately? Yeah, I hear myself. What? You sound awful. There's no way you're doing this episode. What? You don't think that people want to listen to my hoarse, raspy, garbage disposal voice for the next 15 minutes? No, I don't think they do. And to be honest, I don't want to listen to it for the next week while I edit this. So I've got VO this week. Fortunately, I pre-recorded most of this in my kitchen already earlier this week, so I already did most of the work here. The potential damage that you could do to this episode is minimal at best. Don't screw it up, though. Don't you dare tank the channel, Dan. Considering that all our jobs depend on it, I'll try not to. No pressure. All right, I'm gonna go rest my voice now. Like I said, you'll see me mostly through the bulk of this episode. Dan's just the connective thread here, but thanks for giving me a chance to rest, guys. I'll see you all next week. All right, theorists, it's Dan time. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Crime Scene Kitchen, the all-new competition series on Fox, where America's best bakers think like detectives and bake like pastry chefs. They will have to scour the kitchen for clues and ingredients to figure out what was baked there and then duplicate the recipe based on their guess, all while showing off their technical skills and creativity. We really appreciate their sponsorship, and we encourage all you theorists to check out the series premiere Wednesday at 9, 8 central on Fox. I gotta say, I absolutely love the premise of this show. It's a fun twist on what you usually expect, which is also exactly how I describe the cookbook at the center of today's food theory. Yes, theorists, you read the title right. Here's Matt Pat with a fully functioning voice to explain. Today, we're doing the do. Oh man, it's gonna be do terrific. I'm just concerned about the number of puns and how bad they're gonna get. Oh, they're puns. they're gonna be the lowest level of pun. Like, we'll need to do better. Mm, no. I think the original Mountain Dew like advertising campaign had something to do with it being like derived in some way from mountain spring water. Uh, not quite, Steph. Yahoo! Mountain Dew! Now he shoots off the cup. It's more than enough after nipping at that good old Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew will tickle your innards cause it is a bang in every bottle. Yeah, don't think the tickle your innards tagline does well in 2021. So true story. I had a dental appointment earlier this week and I told my dentist what we were planning on doing today and she actively covered her ears and told me to shut up because it was like her worst nightmare. You see, we all recently discovered that Mountain Dew creates cookbooks now. Shocking, right? And you're not the only one to be surprised. Even the cookbook itself has a question mark at the end. Mountain Dew and food? Question mark? Looks like Mountain Dew is just as surprised as we are, which probably tells you more about the contents contained in this book than any other book cover. I've ever read. The radioactive green ingredient is not something you'd think to use in other dishes. And so, true story, the original intent with this episode was to go through the book, have Matt Pat make a handful of the recipes, and just meme the book to death. Haha, <laughs> that was so bad. Who thought Mountain Dew, or should I say Mountain Dew because that's its official name now, was a good idea. But the thing is, Matt made them, and they weren't all that bad, according to him. Legitimately, they were pretty good, according to Matt. But there was just one thing missing. One huge gap in the content contents of this cookbook. Pizza. There is no recipe for pizza. I mean, come on, Mountain Dew. I'm just gonna say Mountain Dew. It's ridiculous to do this for the entire thing. They put a 96 page cookbook together and left out Mountain Dew's number one pairing. 13 year old lamb party pimple pat was rolling in his grave. Wait, Matt's dead? Mountain Dew and pizza just makes sense. Mountain Dew pizza and Doritos even more sense. Mountain Dew pizza, Doritos, and all the grease on my Xbox controller makes the best sense. Actually, my freshman year in college, I loved Mountain Dew so much. My friend and I, we once went to Safeway where they're having a buy two, get three, 12 cases, and uh, we bought 10 full cases of Mountain Dew, and they lasted a week. If I die young, it is because of that. And so Mountain Dew, I'm gonna contribute the last four pages of your book. It's 96 pages right now. Here's the last four pages. We're giving you a pizza recipe today that is gonna be do-rific. It's gonna be a whoopity-doo. It's gonna... 
<laughs> it's going to be a woobity do. This is going to be Video a top tier food theory episode right next to the bread gloves. YouTube premium, here we come. Okay, so admittedly, this channel isn't the first to attempt making a Mountain Dew pizza. A quick YouTube search will bring up a handful of other videos, all with varying degrees of success. Like this video that basically just pours Mountain Dew straight into the tomato sauce and calls it a day. Epic Meal Time, meanwhile, incorporated Mountain Dew and Doritos into various parts of the recipe. Definitely a better approach, but the video ends before Harley can even give us his opinion on the taste. Instead, it chose to show him raving like a lunatic over slow-mo shots of the neon green pizza. I got 30 one-way tickets to have it loaded in this magazine. Who wants that trip right now, boy? I've seen a lot of weird things on YouTube. This, this is up there. Don't get me wrong. We've done our fair share of weird things too. I mean, Matt Pat wore bread gloves on his hands for two days. Which in the script, it says I got to admit that it's pretty dumb, but I'll just tell you right now. It was pretty dumb. That and like Matt eating a tree, which was a choice. But we do have one thing those other channels do not. And that is the official Mountain Dew cookbook. The book is a collection of the best Mountain Dew recipes in existence. And after pouring over it, Matt was able to unlock the techniques, unraveling the mysteries contained within. You substituted Mountain Dew where you would use a lot of citrus. Okay, so it wasn't that difficult. So the thing that's gonna be different about our pizza today is that we're taking the flavor, the essence, the core of Mountain Dew, and we're infusing it into each and every step of the pizza making process. So the way we're doing that is we've taken a bunch of tried and true recipes delivered to us from the Mountain Dew cookbook, and we've tweaked them or altered them slightly so that they're more conducive to making a pizza. So our crust dough is a modified version of the pancake dough. Our chicken topping is gonna be a modified version of their just standalone chicken. We have a, a cheese filling that is actually going to be a modified version of their grilled cheese, etc. This is gonna be really healthy. This, you're gonna wanna add this to all of your hot summer body diets. Rarely has there been a pizza that has actively made you want to brush your teeth after consuming it. This is the pizza that is not American Dental Association recommended. Zero out of 10 dentists would, would back this. So we've got some chicken to fry, we've got some dough to roll out, and we've got some Mountain Dew salsa to chop up as our sauce for the pizza. So we're gonna go do that and uh, cue the B-roll. Montage time! Woo! For a chicken topping, Matt and Steph decided to go with the citrus garlic chicken recipe. It was actually one of their favorites from the cookbook. The Mountain Dew flavor battles with the savory chicken in a nice way that is reminiscent of other sweet and sour chicken recipes, but it does take an hour to marinate, so they prepared that earlier. Side note, I really feel this is one part of the cooking that the Mountain Dew is really going to excel at. Sure, marination is used to add flavors to your foods, but the other purpose is to keep your food tender by beginning the process of breaking down meat tissue. And let's be honest, Mountain Dew isn't shy about its acidity levels or breaking down things like your healthy teeth. Mmm, look at that marinade. Looks, looks real tasty. Sometimes I'm glad to just be the one editing these things and not having to try them out. By the way, that's six ounces of Mountain Dew in that bowl with garlic and cilantro in case you're wondering. The chicken's going to take a few minutes to fry all the way, so let's see them start working on the sauce, shall we? Because it's Mountain Dew pizza, we all really wanted to get the color green into this pizza wherever possible. Because reasons. And so Matt started with a green salsa recipe from the book that cleverly called for tomatillos instead of red tomatoes. Fun fact. Uh, I've never actually cooked with tomatillos before this project, so that's really you're cool. You're still not cooking with them because you're not helping. <clears throat> Ollie actually calls these little tomato presents because he thinks that the leaf covering the tomatillo is like wrapping paper, and he, he comes in and keeps unwrapping them. He then modified it from there to keep it more in line with pizza sauce than a salsa. He increased the amount of oil, upped the number of tomatillos, and used one whole onion. Lack if you cry every time. And to think he gives us a hard time about the dated memes. He then reduced the number of jalapenos to one and doubled the number of garlic cloves. Matt's PA, also named Matt, even taught him a new trick for peeling the garlic. I smash it with the flat edge of my knife and then I still peel it with my fingers. Oh, it is a little bit easier. <laughs> I learned something today. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is a legit food channel on YouTube. All right, so here we go. So we've chopped up all the tomatillo, we've chopped up all the jalapeno, the garlic, 
We've minced the garlic and we've chopped up all the onions. Matt cried, I cried. Matt cried for the onions, I cried because of my existential dread. And now we're gonna make some sauce. They threw it all into a pan and added 3.5 cups of Mountain Dew into it, fried it up, and blended it into a fine sauce. We're gonna be streaming exclusively on Blender. No further questions. It's gonna be loud. So I've shown you the sauce, the chicken. I think it's time that you saw the dough. And uh, remember how I said this is a legit food channel? Um, yeah, this isn't gonna help. You toss in green pizza dough in the air. Oh no, oh no, oh, oh. All right, gamer bro. Are you ready for some gamer dough? Ah, uh, ah, uh, do the dough. Every gamer loves a nice, healthy sprinkling of flour. This is something that everyone likes to do at their LAN party, right? Sprinkle flour. Sprinkle. Boom! So we've pre-prepped the dough, because that took quite a while to rise, yep. and to take on the full consistency of Nickelodeon GAC. Like, I actually think we have discovered the secret GAC recipe It's here. either GAC or the snot that blocks my nasal cavity. Oh, oh man. Nickelodeon. Eat your heart out every kid's slime channel ever. You should put some flour on your hands, yeah, thank not you. on my face. So the first thing we have to do is kind of knead out some of the air that's been in here. So this is a full like yeast dough rising kind of flour. So we can really get in there and kind of knead it out mm -hmm. to make sure that the gluten is really developed. I learned that. Ooh. I know, I know. I learned it from the Great British Baking Show. So a lot of the recipes in the Mountain Dew cookbook mix Mountain Dew into things like pancakes, muffins, etc all of which require baking soda. However, none of the recipes in the book give guidance for a yeast-based dough. So Matt had to figure that out himself. Would yeast even be able to feed off of Mountain Dew? Apparently, yes. Caffeinated it right up, just like me after my eighth cup of coffee before 10 a.m. He knew that he liked the amount of Mountain Dew flavor in the pancakes, so he put approximately the same proportion into our crust, meaning another half can of Mountain Dew went straight into the dough as a water substitute. I can feel all the sugar in my veins and I'm just reading the script. This is the worst sounding thing I've ever had to read. He did end up microwaving the Mountain Dew prior to adding it to the rest of the ingredients as it need to be slightly warm in order to activate the yeast. Stephanie, can you toss it in the air and make it you know, actually do the pizza thing. Can no, you do the pizza Steph, thing? I'm not that Italian. Do the pizza thing. I, I'm an actual Italian citizen, but I'm not that Italian. Look at this. This is so good. I'm so sad right now. Oh, it just looks like you killed it. <laughs> we just killed a lizard in the backyard. This is our dead iguana that we're just tossing around. With the dough tortured into place and Steph's citizenship in question, it was time for them to stuff the crust. That's right. They wanted to do stuffed crust because why not embrace the gooey goodness of the stuffed crust 90s pizza that was the pinnacle of the Friday night lamb parties nationwide. It was also a great way to get some more neon green into this dish. To make the stuffed crust filling, they started with the book's grilled cheese sandwich and switched out cheddar for mozzarella. So really it was a bunch of mozzarella mixed with some cream cheese. To infuse it with the essential Mountain Dew flavor, they reduced down about 3.5 cups of soda to about a quarter cup. You could say they took some Mountain Dew and turned it into some Mountain Goo. Matt forced me to include that joke. He was um very proud of it based on the amount of times he used it in this footage. Mountain Goo. Mountain Goo. Mountain Goo. I can feel my grip on reality fall apart as I slowly become nothing but an empty husk filled with puns and bad dad jokes. Oh, oh, the scent hitting my nose. Oh, of, it's pungent. Of warm, reduced Mountain oh, Dew. God. It is palpable. Ugh. And we still have about a quarter cup left to reduce it. I think I the hairs in my nostrils just shriveled up and died. All right, so our Mountain Goo has finally reduced down to past the point of being neon green and now into just like poorly hydrated urine yellow. It Right? That's exactly what it is. And it's syrupy consistency. This is like maple syrup texture all over the place. Yeah, this is the, t this is the texture of maple syrup and the color of I did not drink enough water last night urine. So that's going into our cheese mix. Mm, mm, pour it oh, in. Oh, look at 
at that nice, oh, look at that mountain goo. He then added some food coloring to really give it that green pop it deserves, is what he wants me to say. But I know the truth. I see all the footage, Matt, and I know what really happened. He forgot to mix in the gel food coloring, and they had to scramble to try to put it back in. Here's the before, here's the after. Look, we're good editors, but we can't fix every mistake. Also, never say fixed in post, or I will come directly for you. The key is to stretch outward and then tuck inward, because we don't want to make the pizza smaller. So stretch out, right. tuck in. Stretch and tuck. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just like out in Paul's Drag Race. Whoa, I, w I thought that, but I wasn't going there. <laughs> With all the components finally made, it was time to build this monstrosity. And of course, here at this crucial part is when Matt started to have some doubts. So we blended up the sauce. It did in fact blend. Uh, I'm curious to actually give it a taste. It kind of looks like uh, disgusting baby food. Yeah. Wow. That is such a barrage of flavors into my mouth right now. It's a little bit spicy. It's a little bit sweet. It's like a sweet and spicy, a little bit sour. I kind of do hate it, actually. See, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I love the tomatillo. I actually like the jalapeno a lot. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of elements of that sauce I like, but to me, that like syrupy sweetness that's huh. like in the mix there somewhere, yeah. I'm like, oh, what are you doing here? You know, it's funny. Mm -mm. I don't mm -mm. hate it. I don't know if I'll like it in a large quantity on a slice of pizza. I'm confused as a person. By it's it's wacky. I mean, look at the color of the sauce. Yummy! It looks like baby mm. vomit smeared on top of a green gack pizza. People laughed at me when I had the bread bowl glove idea. This one didn't even come from me. This came from a different member of the team. This came from Luke. Right, bro, like, blame Luke, right? So, hashtag blame Luke on this one. Hit me with the cheese, Matt. Hit me with the cheese, Matt. <laughs> Where is my hand? Hit me with the cheese, Matt. Yeah! First time every time. I love the fact that Matt didn't do anything with the cheese. Like, he went to such lengths to put Mountain Dew into everything except the main topping of the pizza. Anyway, sauce went on, cheese went on, time for the chicken. How'd it taste, Steph? Still tastes like chicken. That's a good sign. Not as dewy as I would expect. You I definitely mean, get a little bit of it, though. A little bit of dew. I'm not sure I'm into this, man. I might not be a hardcore enough gamer for, this, true. for this dish. And with that, it was time to stick this up combination to everything cooking into the oven. But wait, I hear you screaming at your screen. Matt Pat said this was the ultimate gamer food. He promised Doritos. Apparently, it's not a good idea to put those in the oven since Doritos are surprisingly flammable. Yeah, they found that out the hard way. It erupted in flames while the camera wasn't rolling, but I imagine it looked something like this. Ah! Oh no. Next production call, Jason told us that Doritos were actually quite good as fire starters while camping. Thanks. Great timing as always, Jason. So they just sprinkled some on the crust midway through the baking process. And with the pizza now cooking in the oven, all we have now is to wait. So if you'll excuse us, we're gonna do some hardcore gamer activities. Wanna go play The Witness? Yeah. Oh, puzzling, yes! It's a puzzle game. Woo, 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 that we play together. Here we are, at the end of this long, mountainous, dewy road. I think it's important to remember that it's not the final destination, but the friends we made along the way that matters. Cause Lord knows, this pizza is gonna be awful. So, fun fact, caffeine doesn't actually cook out in the cooking process. Surprisingly, caffeine is thermally stable, with a boiling point of roughly 178 degrees Celsius, or 352 degrees Fahrenheit. And it isn't actually chemically changed changed until about 235 degrees Celsius or 455 degrees Fahrenheit. And sure, when you cook a pizza, your oven is around 450 degrees Fahrenheit, but the food isn't. You see, during the baking process, no matter the temperature of the oven, the food you are baking rarely goes above 100 degrees Celsius, as long as there's water in the food. This is because the water is boiling off and keeps the food temperature roughly maxed out at the boiling point. What does this all mean for the Mountain Dew pizza? Well, basically, it means each slice of of this bad boy is carrying the caffeine equivalent to one can of Pepsi. Isn't that insane? Each slice is like downing a full soda. Now, the only thing to remain is the taste test. Please do the honors, okay, stuff. Ready? Slice it up. Okay. Slice up this monstrosity that we've birthed into the world. This is the pizza that gets your Italian citizenship revoked, <laughs> Stephanie. Okay. We are sliced, we're ready to go. All right, here it is. Here's the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. I am so scared of what we have wrought. Here it is. Okay. Ooh, look at nice, nice oh, slice. Oh, the underneath of the crust is really green. And you can kind of see some of the ooey green 
oozing out of the side there. Yeah, there's definitely a stuffed crust going on. You're gonna eat it with a fork. Ah. Why did we do this episode? <laughs> it's pretty good. This tastes exactly like a barbecue chicken pizza. It does have a lot of similarities with that. It tastes a lot like a barbecue chicken pizza. It's got that little sweetness. It's got the chickeny flavor. It's got the oniony flavor, which honestly I don't hate. It, and it still has a little bit of that citrus kick that Mountain Dew has. I'm actually not a big fan of barbecue chicken pizza, which is maybe why I am yeah. not registering happy happy feelings with this pizza, but it is absolutely a lot like a barbecue chicken pizza. 100%. And if you're into that, I could totally 100% see this being like a great pizza of choice. I'm very curious oh, about the stuffed crust. I haven't gotten there yet. Even the stuffed crust actually. No. Also very good. No. The one thing we can agree on, hmm. this is, I will say, hands down, the ultimate gamer food. So there you have it, loyal theorists. Today, Matt and Steph set out to create the ultimate gamer food, and they had something surprisingly palatable. Success? I personally have no idea, but we think we got a recipe to help Mountain Dew get to that 100 pages. So, you know, hit us up, Mountain Dew. I think we just might have the missing piece to your unnaturally green buffet. And once again, a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Crime Scene Kitchen, premiering Wednesday at 9, 8 central, right after the Masked Singer finale on Fox. If you love desserts, and let's be honest, who doesn't, then Crime Scene Kitchen is a culinary guessing game you're not gonna wanna miss. And always remember, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Matthew, this episode's starting to feel a little cheesy. Uh, ah, ah. Oh, there's a reason I hang out with you in my life. Cause I know how to cook, isn't it? No, it's because you put up with projects like this. I am so sorry. I am so, so sorry. We're gonna retire someday, right? We're gonna be doing this when we're 60. That's it, done! <laughs>